When in Rome, worship this group of badasses. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Roman gods and goddesses. Tonight is Saturnalia, the wild December holiday in Saturn's honor. For this list, we're focusing on gods that were truly important to the Romans. While many of these gods do have Greek equivalents, we're ranking our list based on their significance to the Roman people, and not their popularity in the Greek pantheon. When the gods of Rome ride chariots across the sky, it is Vulcan that made them. When they reach for weapons to wield in battle, it is Vulcan that forged them. When the very earth rumbles and mountains erupt in searing flame, it is Vulcan's rage that burns. Number 10. Mercury, the messenger god, god of travelers, thieves, and commerce. Mercury, god of commerce, wrestling, gymnastics, thieving, good luck, sleep, wealth, and dreams. Mercury's duty as messenger of the gods carried over from his Greek counterpart, Hermes. But his Roman incarnation further develops his role as patron god of travelers, financial gain, providence, and more. That's a pretty wide range of responsibilities. In the ancient poem Fasti by Ovid, Mercury is tasked with bringing the nymph Larunda to the underworld. Though Mercury, also a god of trickery, gets a bit sidetracked and the two have sex. What a reputation. Mercury's depicted wearing a winged hat and shoes. Look familiar? They should. They were adopted by DC's The Flash, who's based on this Roman god. And in a blur of motion, police scientist Barry Allen becomes The Flash. World's fastest human. Mercury Speed also inspired Ford to name a division of premium cars after him. Well, a guy's gotta get places. Number 9. Bacchus, god of wine, agriculture, ecstasy, and theater. It's a wondrous addition to Bacchus, to a full drink. If there's one Roman god you'd want to party with, it's definitely Bacchus the complete Roman equivalent of the Greek Dionysus. He's best known as the god of wine. Hmm, the fact that the ancient Romans had a god specifically for wine makes us think they were probably pretty awesome and definitely had their priorities in order. This is just the first stop of the no holds barred Bacchanalia. The Romans took their worship of Bacchus to the next level by holding a festival in the god's honor called Bacchanalia, which from what we can tell was just a giant orgy. In fact, the festival was considered so debaucherous, the government basically tried to ban it across all of Italy in 186 BC. Sorry guys, you know the rules. No fun allowed. Come on, you pansy! I'm thirsty. I want me some Tennessee loopy juice! Number 8. Cupid, god of erotic love and desire. Come on, Cupid, get it over with. Let's have a toga party. Honestly, Cupid has always kind of creeped us out. You'll definitely recognize this chubby, winged, naked baby as one of the symbols of Valentine's Day, and thus a mainstay in popular culture. It is I, Cupid, god of love. In myths, he plays a comparatively small role, whose purpose is mostly to stir up trouble by piercing someone with an arrow and putting them under his lustful spell. Cupid has managed to surface in modern media from The Santa Claus 2 and 3 to the one-season ABC flop Cupid starring Jeremy Piven. It's a Valentine's Day conspiracy. I don't blow my own horn, so I end up on wrapping paper looking like a fat winged baby. There you go, look at that, huh? He thinks he's Cupid? You'd think the god of erotic love and desire would have a little more street cred. Maybe putting on some pants would help. You fall in love with the first person you see. These are for you. Number 7. Saturn, god of time and agriculture. Saturn, god of harvest and grain, bringer of food, drink, and merriment. Choose your king. Another god, another awesome festival. Near the end of December, Romans celebrated Saturnalia in honor of Saturn. It was a joyous time when gifts were exchanged and slaves were given temporary freedoms. Hey, Sheldon, are you and Leonard putting up a Christmas tree? No, because we don't celebrate the ancient pagan festival of Saturnalia. The festival actually shares a lot of similarities to the Western tradition of Christmas, and its placement near the end of the calendar year meant that Saturn came to be connected with the passage of time, and particularly the shift to the new year. Christmas has its roots in the pagan festival of Saturnalia, 
which is traditionally celebrated by intoxication, naked singing, and the consumption of human-shaped biscuits. Even today, our calendars bear his name in the form of Saturday. And the planet Saturn also demonstrates his lasting influence. But like his Greek counterpart Kronos, Saturn's relationship with his children was less than perfect, since he had a tendency to, well, you know, eat them. Number 6. Pluto, God of Death Whereas the Greek god of death Hades was basically the most diabolical guy around, Pluto was actually a revered and respected Roman god, seen as a pitiable figure. Hades provoked fear, but Pluto was worshipped as the god of wealth and abundance, especially of the earth and its crops. Given that the underworld was located below the soil, he came to be responsible for that as well. Unlike his brother Jupiter, who procreated excessively, Pluto was never said to have any children and was monogamous with his wife Prosperina. Of course, Christianity later drew associations between Pluto and the devil, but it seems like he may have just been one seriously misunderstood dude. And show unto us, I beseech you, the gods of the underworld! Number 5. Minerva, goddess of wisdom, poetry, and weaving. How about Minerva, after the Roman goddess of wisdom? Mm, uh, not enough commercial appeal. Minerva's beginnings were, well, strange. After the god Jupiter impregnated the titaness Metis, Jupiter remembered a prophecy saying that one of his offspring would usurp him. Logically, he ate the pregnant Metis and hoped for the best. After suffering from terrible headaches, he got one of his buddies to split his head open and out came a fully formed and armed Minerva. Clearly, this chick was hardcore. Minerva has become a symbol of academia and is featured in the seals and emblems of many educational institutions. Mythology-loving writer J.K. Rowling also gave a nod to the Romans when she named the wise and stern Professor Minerva McGonagall after the goddess. Your skills, after all, are legend. Number 4. Mars, God of War and Agriculture It comes from Mars, the God of War. And it means little warrior. Remember how it was Jupiter who gave birth to Minerva and not, you know, a woman? Well, Jupiter's wife Juno, not Minerva's mother Metis, yes, Jupiter was a player, decided to get back at Jupiter for stealing her role in childbirth and having Minerva alone. The myth tells of a magical flower that let her conceive without the help of a man. And the result of this little experiment? Mars. Like Pluto, Mars is the more likable version of his Greek counterpart Ares. Though Mars is the god of war, he is not a violent or aggressive figure, but rather someone who uses warfare as a means to achieve peace. The Romans believe that sword belonged to Mars. They're god of war. We all know the legend, thank you. We were told it as children. Number 3. Venus, Goddess of Love and Beauty Who are you? I am Venus, daughter of Jupiter, goddess of love. In Botticelli's famous painting, The Birth of Venus, we see the myth of Venus's inception depicted in all its glory. The painting may be beautiful, but the story is not. As legend goes, Saturn castrated his father Kylus and threw his genitalia into the sea. And from the horror and gore came something truly beautiful this alluring goddess. At least he wasn't a Roman god. Those guys are jerks. Her connection to the Roman people is perhaps closer than any other figure on this list, as her son Aeneas brought the surviving Trojans over to Italy to establish Rome. In today's pop culture, the image of Venus still represents the ideals of female beauty and is even used in marketing feminine hygiene products. Now there's a razor that swirls and swerves as every blade adjusts to your curves. Venus Swirl. Number two. Neptune, god of the sea. That's a statue of Neptune, god of water. Believe it or not, Neptune, ruler of the deep blue, had humble beginnings. He started off as a god of smaller bodies of water, like rivers and lakes. I'm Neptune, god of the sea. I sink ships and conjure up storms. No, you're not. I am. And you know nothing of my work. Before he took over as head honcho, it was Portunus or Fortunus who were to be sacrificed to and credited for any triumphs at sea. But by the first century BC, Neptune had solidified his place. Old Neptune, shake thy hoary locks. 58 ships are underway of every tonnage and firing range. Of all the gods on our list, this brother of Jupiter and Pluto definitely makes the most impressive entrance, rolling in on a chariot pulled by water horses while brandishing his trident. 
Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number one, Jupiter, god of thunder and king of the gods. In the Roman myth, Jupiter, the god, drew a veil of clouds around him to hide his mischief. Until Christianity was adopted by the Roman people, Jupiter was their number one deity. He was an omnipotent and all-encompassing god whose domain covered all aspects of life, from government to religion. In fact, an entire class of priests was devoted to making sure Jupiter was receiving proper sacrifice, something the Romans believed would earn them favor with the god. The incestuous relationship Jupiter had with his sister-slash-wife Juno was carried over from their Greek counterparts, though their relationship was probably more complicated because Jupiter had trouble keeping it in his toga. Despite these shortcomings, Jupiter is the most powerful and epic of all the gods, earning him the title of King of the Gods and King of this list. Hail Jupiter! Do you agree with our list? Who's your favorite Roman god or goddess? For more divine top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Oh, now you have your bow. Mm -hmm. Where's your arrow? Do you really need to ask? <laughs>